Australia currently has no laws in relation to facial recognition technology, despite the impact that such technology can have. The risk of irresponsible use is probably greatest in the law enforcement realm. This is where irresponsible use of this technology really can impact on rights and freedoms of people. And what we know is often it disproportionately impacts on those people of colour, women and people with disabilities. Facial recognition technology is increasing exponentially. A lot of people know about facial recognition being used in their phones to unlock their devices, but it's also being used in much more hidden ways. So police are starting to use facial recognition to identify criminal suspects. Um, sometimes it's being used uh, in recruitment or employment. It's even being used by banks and other shops to identify people who might be doing the wrong thing. As a human rights lawyer, I can see the really exciting potential for facial recognition to make our community more inclusive. But at the moment, it's subject to quite significant rates of error. And we need to be really clear on how to address that problem, as well as the problem that we do not want to become a society that is essentially one where there's mass surveillance. We brought together a very diverse group of experts to advise us on the key elements of a model law. By gathering together those diverse views, we're able to really sense test some of the work that we've been doing over the last six to nine months. And that gives us a much more strong sense of confidence that we're able to come up with a really robust proposal for a model law. We commissioned some qualitative research to understand Australians' views on different uses of facial recognition technology. So in designing our interactive facial recognition tool, we wanted to come up with four different scenarios which would reflect potential real-world cases where people might engage with facial recognition. For scenario one, we used the example of entering a building with your face. For scenario two, we simulated the situation of verifying your identity to get a home loan application. For scenario three, we wanted to reflect uh, a higher risk scenario, so the use of one-to-many facial identification in an airport security setting. For scenario four, we came up with a fairly extreme risk example of facial recognition in the form of facial analysis, whereby uh, security or police would actually use analysis technologies to assess people's level of, of aggressiveness in a public space, such as a stadium um, or a, a large event, and then use that assessment to decide whether or not to remove you from the venue. Exposing people to different types of facial recognition through the simulation tool really allowed people to have a much more nuanced and sophisticated conversation around the different levels of concern and also the protections that they wanted to see for different uses of facial recognition technology. I questioned whether or not it made an accurate judgment of me based on my appearance. A few of the, the really interesting findings around this were first of all that people do change their attitudes to facial recognition when they are exposed to how it affects them personally. Once people feel what it's like to have a credit card application rejected or be denied boarding to a plane uh, or even be judged as aggressive in a stadium, which are the kind of scenarios that the face value installation present, they do start to reflect individually and with each other about what kind of rules should be there to protect their rights. This is technology that we know has benefit. We want it to be able to flourish. We just want it to be done so in a way that is responsible and in a way that means that people's rights are protected. We're keen to see uh, that it gets taken up and, and, and used as an input into policy making. In fact, we're incredibly pleased that that's already the case. We're deeply engaged at the federal, state and territory levels as we're producing this model law. People in Australia want facial recognition technology to help make their lives more convenient, to make their community more inclusive, particularly for people with disability, but they also want to make sure that they are protected from harmful uses of facial recognition. 
our law has a crucial role to play in setting that framework, to setting the guardrails that make sure that we are able to have the future that we want and need using facial recognition and not a dystopian future that we fear.